at some point, food became uh, something that we learned was comfortable. It's easier to just eat food than to face a problem head on. So kind, thank you. And it's funny because I get asked or I get commented on that a lot. You're so natural on video, like you're so good. And I'm like, you know how Facebook sends you those um, memories of five years ago, this is what happened. I got one of those a little while back. <laughs> I'm Sabrina and I am a health and fitness coach. Hey, how are you? Everything's good? My name is Jeremy Cologne and I am the founder of Revamp Training. Tell me something good that happened today. It could be anything. You know, you're doing what you need to do, you're feeling good. No, that's good, that's good. Tell me a little more on how I can help you. So food's always a way to kind of come back to our roots. I, I, come from, I come from a very Hispanic background, so if you don't eat the mother's food, it's a form of disrespect. People talk about um, the freshman 15. I gained 100 pounds at university. The more weight I gained, the sadder and more depressed I started to feel. So the person that I was before was pretty much at the lowest point. It was like in conversations, we'll go, as, we'll go as a family out to eat or celebrate someone's birthday. And, you know, obviously I'm going for seconds and looking at me like, you know, like you should stop. I felt as if food was all I had in a lot of ways. I always had an issue getting up, had an issue with obligations, not motivated, lack of focus, very emotional, very sensitive. I, I was bullied a lot while I was at university, which is just ridiculous to even say out loud. I felt as if everyone was so skinny and they could eat whatever they wanted and they would just stay the way they were. Like I would um, talk to myself horribly. I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. I couldn't accept or take ownership of where I was at. It was easy to just blame the world for my shortcomings. I took things more personally than just taking it for what it was. Like, hey, you're probably right. Maybe I should start rearranging and realizing that I need to do better for myself. So step one was getting my mindset back. Like going back to the basic, going back to Reddit, reading stories of people who did it, who done it, looking at videos and finding different inspirations and influences that like, okay, cool. Maybe if I get, get my stuff together, I can get back to this person. You know, if you're gonna go all in, go all in. If not, you know, don't do it. Ooh. Woo. So I struggled with getting into movement and all that kind of stuff, but yes, I started going to the gym, being on the treadmill, thinking that cardio was king and I just had to run all this weight off. I developed an eating disorder, I developed bulimia, so I would binge and purge. And that's how I started to see the weight coming off. So yeah, I lost the weight, but it was not a win. We moved here to the States and I worked at Lululemon for a couple of years. I co-owned a boutique fitness studio. It was really encouraged to have an active, healthy lifestyle and you were supported in those endeavors. Uh, that's when I decided I wanted to become a personal trainer and start my personal training business. So things started to shift in, in the right direction and then, <laughs> then they didn't again. 2019. I had gained probably about another 30, like 35 pounds, close to 40 pounds back. I've done this the whole time. No one's ever perfect on a transformation journey. There is a roller coaster, ebbs and flows. Some weeks are better, some days are better, you know, depending on the months, days, if you have friends who invite you, you haven't seen in a while, family events, just life in general. Cause it's like when you're, when you're having like your high days, you're like, yes. I'm on top of the world, I'm gonna make things happen. And then you have your low days, I'm like, oh my, what am I doing? Well, what am I thinking? It got better when I started to focus on my mental health. Reading books, listening to audiobooks, listening to podcasts, that's when everything changed. It changed how I view myself, it changed the self-respect I had, it changed how I fed my body, how I moved my body. So even if, if the workout sucked, 
or you know, I only gave it like 20, 30 minutes, I was like, cool, I feel good about it. Like I don't I don't I don't feel like I don't feel like I wasted my time. I feel like I actually gave it like a shot. So for me, it really is like, you feel good, great, do your stuff. You feel bad, great, do your stuff more. Dear Sabrina of 2019, I never wanted to be you. Dear Jeremy of 2020 to 2021, they told you you're a joke, a fake, an amateur, and unfit for anything worthy. I so hated you when you first destroyed me in 2001 with your binge eating and your eating in secret and your hiding from the things that were hurting you. You're just a nobody who's trying too hard to make it. And I hated you in 2019 for allowing the same BS to take me away from myself again. Look at you. You let yourself go and gain 50 pounds. You let your breakups and broken friendships ruin you. Didn't your brother's passing mean something to you? You crawled into that hole, pretending that the binging and self-hatred were not happening and getting so mad because you were starting to look like her again. You gave up and I hate you for that. But I now realize that you didn't really give up, did you? None of that matters. What matters is what you're going to do now to be better than before. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for climbing out of that pit and giving me a chance. Thank you for not saying no to a workout when it was raining or snowing. I'm healthy, I am powerful, I'm strong AF and I'm happy. Thank you for actually showing up. And like a true hero, you're actually the hero of your own story. Without your mess, I could never have found my message. A message that I will use to help other women become who they were always meant to be. Love, Sabrina of 2022. To the future and beyond, Jeremy from 2022. Um, I never saw myself as somebody that could be of influence or make an impact in the lives of other people, no. The hardest part of this whole transformation journey is showing up and telling yourself, let's do this. I wrote a mantra for myself that is, I am willing to feel any emotion on the way to my goals.